Let's take a look at MCL455 microcontroller concept. Now the course is broken into two parts, lab and theory. All three theory sections are identical and all six lab sections are identical. So we'll take a look at the theory section first. And the course content for the theory section looks like this. Important dates and deadlines, course outline, addendum, course textbook, professor contact information, video lectures, practice quizzes, chapter quizzes, term tests, final exam, and some other things that we'll talk about later. Now let's start off by looking at important dates and deadlines. These are the important dates and deadlines for fall of 2024. Some of the most important ones are things when the college is closed. For instance, it's closed on September 2nd, and it's also closed on October 14th. And so these are going to cause trouble in terms of evaluations and other things. Let's take a look at the course addendum. Now the course addendum shows us week by week what's going to happen. And so September 2nd, you can see the college is closed on that Monday. And we'll look at how that's going to impact certain classes as we go through. Now, these are the things that you have to learn in the first week. So there's one theory class that won't be having the theory class there, but there are video lectures for this. The first theory evaluation is really week three, where there's a chapter quiz worth 2% of your theory mark. As we go down to the next one, we have chapter two quiz, which is again theory here, which is another 2%, and that covers this material here. And the week of September 30th, we have serial communications and chapter three quiz. And you'll notice here October 7th, there's no quizzes here for our theory. And you'll see here that for MCO 455EF, that we have to move term test one because that's the Monday class, which would normally have their theory evaluation here, has to be moved one week earlier. If you're an MCL 455 EF, term test one will be here. For all the other theory sections, term test one will be here. Before we go through the second half of our addendum, let's take a look at something that's going to be an issue. If we look here, the college is going to close on December 11th, which is a Wednesday, not a Friday. So we don't have a complete week on the last end of the semester. Let's take a look at professor contact information. So if we go there, we can see here's my mugshot and here's where my room is. You can click to email me. But more importantly down here, here's the timetable. On that last week of the course, a Wednesday is when classes are going to end. Now this is an FF, which is a lab section, so we don't care because all the lab tests are the week before that. But we can see here that the MCO 455 AB lecture class will not be able to have their final exam. If we look down here at the bottom, we can see the final exam would be here on 9, 10th, 11th. It would be on the Friday here, but since it's not going to be able to be done then because the college closes on the Wednesday, we have to move the MCO 455 AB final exam up a week. And because that's moved up a week, we have to move the term test up a week as well. Now, all the changes for the course are given here. MCO 455 EF because that Monday holiday and MCO 455 AB because the term test and the final exam have to be rescheduled because the college closes on a Wednesday, not on a Friday. Now whether you're in the AB, CD, or EF theory section, theory is delivered in a flexible format. What that means is that if you want to come to the class, which is scheduled for that period, that's fine. But you can also take the classes online for your evaluations, whether they're chapter quizzes, term tests, or the final exam. You can also do those online. But if there's any problems that you run into with internet issues or getting kicked out, I will not help you and I will not reschedule a retest if you do that outside the classroom. For anybody that shows up in classroom to do any of those evaluations, I can reset your attempt and I can even give you feedback for the quizzes, but not for the term tests or the final exam. So if you want to make sure that you're not going to lose 15% on a term test or 20% on your final exam, I'd strongly suggest that you show up in the theory class to do these. Now all these are open book, which means it doesn't matter whether you're online or not, you're able to bring all your materials into the classroom and work with them there. The only thing that you need while you're in the classroom is to have a tablet or even a phone to do the multiple choice true-false evaluations that are going to be done for both the theory and for the lab. After professor contact information, we have video lecture. If we open this up, you can see there's six video lectures to go for the first half of the course. Week one through week six are the video lectures for week one through week six. And then there's week seven and eight in the addendum, which are really the term test and lab test week. And then after that, there's a break week. So when it says week seven, eight, and nine here, it really refers to week nine, 10, and 11 in the second half. And these are your video lectures. Now let's take a look here. If we open this one up, we have 
lab one, part one, and part two. Now what's happening in the theory class and the lab class for the first week, we're going to work exclusively on lab one, and we'll take a look at that when we get to the lab section, what it's all about. But if we open up this video lecture here, stop right at start, we can click on this arrow here. You might want to go directly to lab one overview or any of these things that you may have trouble with in lab one after we've done the lab one material in the theory and lab class in week one. It talks about unsigned overflow, signed overflow. So there's all this information here for part one and similar stuff for part two. And if we go down here to practice quizzes, we'll find that we have practice quizzes for week one through six again for the first half of our course. And the practice quizzes aren't for marks, they're to prepare you for the chapter quizzes, the term test, and the final exam. For instance, if I look at week two here, I can go to this one here and say and or exclusive or, and it's going to give you questions like this that you're going to be able to get unlimited attempts for to try and figure this out, and you get automatic feedback right away as to whether you're doing okay or not. Now when you first look at your lab section, it looks almost identical to the theory section except after course textbook it has labs, lab quizzes, and lab tests. So if we go to labs, you can see here that right now I've got summer 2024 open lab schedule and you'll find that later you'll have your fall 2024 lab schedule here because what you're going to be expected to do is to actually pre-do the lab before you come into the lab class. Now just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like when I do have the fall 2024 schedule up here or anything in yellow will be times that you can get into a lab that has the actual equipment that you need to do the labs ahead of time. And so this is a requirement of the course to actually pre-do the labs in an open lab class before you come in. Now there's lab one that you should print out and bring to the first week of classes. That any of these pink links here are links to YouTube videos. So if you click on this it will take you to a YouTube video. Unlike theory evaluations all lab evaluations are in person. You have to physically be in the lab to do any of the lab evaluations. Even though they're multiple choice and true false, which are given online, if you're not physically in the lab, you can't do it. And if you try doing it outside the lab, your mark will be reset to zero. Also, uh, when you're doing your stuff in the lab, you're allowed to use the PC calculator to do calculations that will be on lab one, but you can't go and look at things online or do anything such as bring up an old lab or something something while you're doing your lab tests. Now the required materials that you have to purchase for MCO 455 can be seen by just clicking on this. And you can see that this says parts list for summer of 2022, but this part list has not changed now in several years. What done is we've populated all the labs with Freedom K64s. And the other thing that's also in the lab is a Grove Shield that fits on top of the Freedom K64. So you do not have to purchase either of these two items. What you do have to purchase though for this course is all of these other items here. Now what you're going to find for each of these items that you do have to purchase, there's a link here and you're going to find that of all these suppliers, DigiKey is the preferred supplier for all the devices that you do have to buy. If you order something from DigiKey, usually it arrives on your doorstep in 48 hours or less. And if there's any issues with the device not functioning properly, if you talk to me, they will ship you out one that will work and they'll again be there within 48 hours without you having to send anything back. So let's take a look, for instance, here for the Grove RGB LCD backlit display. And if you look here, it tells you how many are in stock, which means there's a lot. And you just add to cart and you do that for all the different devices that are in the list. Now let's go back and take a look at this one as well. You can see there's 137 in stock, even shows you what it looks like and what's going to appear on your doorstep. Order these as soon as you can. 